I think like at this point in my life, I would not survive without some sort of fat community. Like we have a little group chat of me and my fat friends that like go to college with me. And it's like, guys, like need a fat day ASAP. What is a fat day? Like going to McDonald's and sucking the grease off the floor? What is a little fat group chat, dude? Aren't those words like kind of opposite of what they actually are? Little group? Come on, dude. Let's be honest here for a second. If there are a whole bunch of fat people in this group chat, that group chat is most definitely exploding out of the seams. Like uh, when you make when you make bread in the oven and it starts like, you know, when you, you, know, you add too much dough and it starts overflowing off to the sides or whatever, apexing the sides of the pan. That's what it's like. I think a lot of these people should probably not be on the internet. If you're here and you're telling me that you don't think you could survive uh, it, it, without a fat community, why would you then post yourself on a very compromised position on the internet? That just doesn't make any sense to me. You're, you're sitting here telling me that you have major mental health issues, and yet here you are saying to me what your exact weakness is. Why would you do that? That'd be like if Superman walked up to his arch enemy, his arch enemy and was like, Oh man, I sure hope that you don't have any kryptonite because you know kryptonite is really really bad for me and it's terrible and it will actually hurt me drastically. Why would you tell the internet that? Why would you put yourself on a podcast? But you know what? It, it, it's because these people are just mentally challenged. A lot of these people are mentally disabled. A lot of these people, including the people on this podcast, fail to acknowledge that this person is actually mentally disabled. But they're going to sit there and they're going to monetize the person. And I guess I'm bad too because I'm doing it as well. But it's it's obvious to me that, that that person shouldn't be here. That person shouldn't be on this podcast because like you just straight out told us that they can't handle it. So why are you even here to begin with? Friends that like go to college. Can't handle the heat. Stay out the kitchen, right? With me and it's like, guys, like need a fat day ASAP. <laughs> oh my God, this is that. too much. What do you mean you love that? I hate this podcast so much because they don't actually ask what anything is or they just do words of affirmation. Oh my God, really? Wow, you think that? That's so great. Oh my God. Sometimes they're a little bit backhanded. Sometimes they talk shit to each other for some reason. I don't know. Um, really backhanded, like uh, reverse, re reverse compliments. You know what I'm talking about? Like when somebody goes, oh my God, you don't look that bad today. Or like, oh wow, you look way better than you did yesterday. Hold up. What the fuck did you just say? What are you trying to say about me? You trying to say yesterday I was looking musty? You were trying to say yesterday I was looking like a hogwash? Like I was looking like, I don't know, burnt Steve Buscemi? What are you trying to say right now, dude? Why would you say all that, man? But these people, I don't understand how you can do a podcast and you don't have any pushback at all. I understand that this is in your wheelhouse and you're trying to like promote positivity or whatever bullshit they're trying to say, but there should be a limit to promoting positivity and actually asking questions. Have any type of pushback at all. Hey, why are you on the internet then if you literally are struggling to survive, whatever that means? Uh, why are you trying to be on our podcast? What is up with this? Why are you doing that? What is a fat day? What does this group chat entail? There's never any questions. It's just literally let somebody talk for 25 minutes uninterrupted and then end podcast. Wow, you really accomplished a lot on this podcast. No pushback, no commentary, just words of affirmation and four fat people in the same room smelling up the entire room, bro. Too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is that. too much, too much. Um, yeah, but like my freshman roommate who I'm still roommates with is fat and like we wear the same size and it was like the first time that... I got to like trade clothes with someone. Oh. I've never, I don't listen dude. Okay. This has to be just a lady thing. This has to be just a girly thing, right? Never in my life have I ever thought about trading clothes with any of my musty friends. Never. Uh, I'm friends with all dudes. And you know what? All my friends are also black guys and they're all way bigger than me because they're beefy, big black men, beefy, big black men. So B B B M B B B M. They're all B B B B M's, and they all wear clothes that I don't wear. Uh, so they're wearing Tims, they're wearing Jordans, they're wearing ankle bracelets because they went in jail. No, they didn't. None of them have been in jail. They're all great guys, but uh, I don't want to wear any of their clothes because none of their clothes are necessarily the clothes that I would wear. So when girls go, "Oh my God, can we trade clothes?" It's it's a complete oddity for most men because guys don't trade clothes most of our clothes are falling apart i mean point point to the point to what i'm talking about look what i'm wearing today can you see it look look at this hole hole and this wasn't even how i bought this this is just what happens when you wear clothes for too long i suck at maintaining clothes um but it's okay because me and a lot of other guys will wear clothes until it literally disintegrates off of our body as if 
Thanos snapped his finger and only targeted clothes, that's how far I will take my clothes. I will wear them until I am outside in public and they just off my body because the last little bit bit of HP on those clothes finally dissipated off the wind hitting it too hard. So I don't know what it's I don't know why so many women are changing clothes, but here where where we are in the male community, we don't do that. And it's really weird. Maybe gay dudes, but heterosexual men, definitely not. And most of my guy friends don't even wash themselves very often. A lot of black dudes think it's gay to have a butthole or wash their butthole. So why would I bother wearing any of their jeans like to, to, to anywhere like these guys don't even wash their they don't even wash their nut sacks which like as a teeny I got to like trade clothes with someone oh. which like as a teenager and in high school was all I ever wanted really in teenage and high school all I wanted to do was smell a girl's vagina that's all I wanted to do and I guess be less socially awkward. I don't know man maybe just different priorities right and I was like oh my god I get to go through your closet and like pick stuff out that's crazy yeah that is crazy bro it's just like i can't relate i just i just really can't relate i feel like a lot of people can't relate i don't even understand what this necessarily has to do with being fat you found somebody that was fat that is in the same size as you and now you can find clothes instead of just losing weight and then i guess finding friends that have more clothes than that and then trying their clothes on too i don't know what this has to do with being fat but i i sure bro you got it, it. and like duh we should all have that experience uh, maybe not all of us, right? Like, I'm perfectly fine not going through my... Oh, okay. okay, maybe this is a girl thing. Maybe this is a girl thing, dude. Because if I went through any of my guy friends' closets, it would just be filled up with, like, there's probably a hamster in there they don't know about. There's probably, like, pizza rolls that are chilling on the side somewhere. All the clothes haven't been washed in four years. And there's probably an air fryer on right now cooking his next, his next batch of chicken tenders. And it's perpetually there. I, I don't want to try on any of my guy friends clothes. It's dirty. It's disgusting. Um, most of my guy friends are washing their faces with conditioner or Dawn dish soap. And that's a pretty, pretty convenient thing. I know some guy that actually told me it was a, he actually confessed to me that he made a stick of deodorant last four years. Uh, he just didn't wear it very often. And he told me that he was pretty happy about that. It was an ax piece. We get, it was, he had not used it for so long. He actually bought it in high school since then. He has actually put on more deodorant, so he had made the, the main stick now last a year, which is a step up from four years. So, it's good. Keep applying the deodorant. I don't want to try it. I'm good. I don't know what you mean by, like, we should all do it. I mean, I don't know about that. I think we should all just give me money. That's, yeah, give me money. I th You know what? I think we should all just do that because it's something that we should all experience, giving me money, 100%. And, like... Duh, we should all have that experience. So that- I mean, yes. What do you, what is, what does that have to do? No, no, we shouldn't all have that experience. What, why would we have that experience? And the line that I really love. And why does she sound like that? She sounds like she's almost kind of like choking or falling when she's, when she's talking almost. So then the line that I really love and that I have used myself and that I think is a great one to use is, we trust her body. We trust his body, their body. We're not worried about it. Why would you ever say that, though? We trust their body? That's... What if they get, like, cancer? Like, oh, yeah, we trust their body to handle it. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're 500 pounds? We trust their body. What do you mean you trust their body? Like, it's not like their body has, like, a communication settings, right? It's not like they can relay information to you directly. Uh, a lot of stuff that it's – a lot of things about your body are pretty ambiguous and that you don't you don't really know about until you go to the doctor and they run tests. And even then, that might be ambiguous and they need to run more tests. So, no, I don't agree with you just know. Like, we trust their body to understand stuff. Why? Why? What, what, what are you talking about, bro? What do you – so, like, when I'm sitting here, right, and I'm bricked up, I'm bricked up, like, I'm at a funeral, right, and I'm, I'm just sitting there like, damn, bro, I'm just, I'm just bricked for some reason, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me right now, I'm just feeling some type of way, I'm at a funeral right now, somebody died, but I'm just solidly bricked up right now, like, my meat is literally stuck. Diff. What do I do? Do I go to the bathroom and just beat off? No, that's not socially acceptable. You're not supposed to just beat off at funerals. That's not cool. So, you know what you do? Even though I trust my body to give me the right instincts, I'm not going to beat off, right? In the same way that, for instance, if I'm really hungry and I know I just ate, guess what I'm going to do? Not eat. 
Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Sometimes trusting your body's cues is not necessarily the right thing. So like, let's say for instance, you are a heroin addicted and you love it. You just love heroin in your mouth so much. You're willing to literally go down to Mass Ave and just suck off a whole bunch of black homeless men for a couple mick chickens and a scoop of heroin. I don't know what the pro. I don't know. Like, what 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 is the serving sizes for heroin? I don't know. But anyway, you got a scoop of heroin, and you have, and you also got four mick chickens. Now you're sitting there under the underpass doing heroin because guess what? We trust your body. We trust your body. We think that your body knows what's right, even though that's like complete hogwash and it doesn't make sense. We don't use that metric by anything ever. But totally, yeah, we totally trust your body and stuff like that. Definitely, yeah. We trust her body. We trust his body, their body. We're not worried about it. Should be worried about it. Like, what if you're, you have a kid and he comes home and he's like, Mom, I think I fell down. Bob, I think I fell down a little bit. <laughs> and his arms just hanging off. We trust their body. We know their body's going to be fine. It's okay. We know. This is fine. What do you no, no, take the child, take the children to the to the doctor. And you know, that shuts down a lot. What do you mean it shuts down a lot? Like your life probably. Yeah, that shuts down your fucking life, maybe your brain capacity because you don't really understand what you're saying right now, dude. Uh how come this woman's not pushing him back against that? This woman just said like literal hogwash and her eyebrow is weird, and you're not saying anything about it at all. Like, you don't have to be extraordinarily rude. You don't have to be really, really out of absurdly angry about it. But you can at least push back a bit. Like, ah, okay, well, I mean, I hear what you're saying. And I really do understand what you're saying. But given the fact that a lot of my audience actually doesn't agree with a lot of the rhetoric that we're saying, it might be better to uh, maybe preference that with an example or tell us what that even means at all. When you say we trust their body, what are you talking about? What does that mean when you say you trust somebody's body? How? How do you trust it? What are you talking about, man? There's just I just need a little bit. Just a little bit of nuance here. Can you please discuss what that means? And by sitting there and going, oh, that shuts down a lot of what people are saying. Yeah, because people hear that and they go, huh, that person's mentally disabled. That's That makes perfect sense. What am I doing talking to a mentally disabled person? I don't, <laughs> you're right. Oh my God, you're to, your brain must be smooth like freshly poured concrete. You, you know what? You got it. You're good. Your entire argument crumbles just like a pile of croutons, but it's fine. You're mentally disabled. I don't need to actually say anything about this because this person is actually deteriorated mentally. That's um, a great line. We trust their we body. Trust their what do you mean that's a good line? How is that a good line? For what? A good line for who? For somebody that, that doesn't even make any sense. It didn't even go over anything. We trust their body? Okay, whatever, dude. Uh, whatever, man. I get, I trust my body too when I'm at the funeral and I gotta beat off. No, that shuts down a lot. <laughs> That's um, a great line. We trust their we body. Trust Such their a yes queen, man. I'm sick of these people just yes queening people over and over and over again, dude. You're not contributing anything. You're so fucking boring. You're so you have no spine, literally. For somebody that's somebody that weighs as much as they do, you would think the structural integrity of their spine would be literal like adamantium at this point. But no, these people are fundamentally spineless they have no legs to stand on I don't, they must be floating or something like that all of their arguments contradict each other and they get they get hung up on like buzzwords or they'll collapse um fundamentally if somebody calls them fat but they will never question each other because they're just here to yes queen each other body we're not worried about this why we trust their body to grow the way it needs to grow what do you mean grow in the way that it needs to grow like heroin addiction and like I don't know, like copious amounts of BBC in your throat to ensure that your heroin addiction maintains itself. What do you mean, like we trust their body? Like why do, who do you, how, why though? Like what do you, like if my body was like, damn, I really want to get hit by a car. Do I trust my body? Is that something I should be doing? Or like, no, nah, we don't, what, what, like what exactly do you mean we trust their body? Like, can you go over that a little bit? And this woman down here talking about some, mm, oh yeah totally oh my god that was such oh my god that was such a great that's a such a good phrase we trust their body what are you talking about we trust their body is like not even something dr seuss would write down because it's so offensive to children most children would read that and go huh, look at this fucking bullshit this person thinks they're saying something here nothing is said nothing this whole this that whole that whole statement is completely irrelevant can you go over why we trust their bodies exactly and what that entails instead of this person just at the bottom going mm-hmm yes we're not worried about this. And then your kid, even if your kid hears the doctor raising the questions, they hear the parent or the caregiver in the room saying, we trust their body. So like if your doctor was like, um, well, Mrs. Margaret, go, oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Mrs. Margaret, um, 
I was just going over your child's blood work, and uh, your child is, in fact, seven years old. Uh, weighs as much as a grown man. Has high blood pressure. How did that even... What are you, feeding this kid butter? Uh, okay, high blood pressure. Um, can barely walk without assistance. Uh, it's not It's not looking good. Um, it's not looking good at all for your seven year... I would recommend that we get him on a good diet. I would recommend that we practice more cardio, you know, get him out on the playground. And then the, 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 and then the mother in that situation goes, stop, that's fat phobia. We trust their body. We trust their body. Stop it. No, that's not what we're going to do here. We trust my child's body. We know what is going to be right for my child's body. What are you talking about? Your child's dying. Your child's literally dying. Why does your child have tater tots in their pocket? What are you doing here if you didn't want my help? What are you talking about? We trust their body. If you trust their body, why'd you come to the doctor? What are you even doing here then? The entire purpose of the doctor is to solve problems. If you don't think anything is a problem, then why are you here? What are you doing right now? Your child is fundamentally dying and you're over here talking about so we trust their body? All right, then you know what, man? Get the fuck out. Like, leave my office. I'm not trying to... Hey, get the fuck out of here. I don't want you in my fucking office. You're fucking weird. No, you're not getting a lollipop. You're not getting... You're not getting a sticker. Get this woman out of here. We don't like them. We don't like them. Get, escort them off the premises. That's what I want to hear. Or you just take the child away. Because these people obviously know zero about parenting. If, if I'm talking to a parent and that person says, Oh, yeah, even though my child is obese, we trust their body. I'm looking at that person sideways, bro. I'm going to have to call a couple officials on that person, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? You're raising the questions. They hear the parent or the caregiver in the room saying, We trust their body. And that matters more than what the doctor says. That's... Wow. We trust their body is more powerful than what the doctor says. So if your doctor's like, yep, your kid's got cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, scoliosis on their head for some reason. I don't know how that happened. Um, what are we going to do about this? And you just go, we trust their body. It's That's more important than what you say. Oh, okay. Why are you here then, woman? Because, you know, like the doctors, the kids, they see this doctor twice a year. They don't care. Uh, uh, what are you even talking about? Like, you go to the doctor twice a year, somehow that means that the doctor's not, like, eligible to know anything about your child because he only sees them twice a year? Santa Claus only sees your child once a year, and he had, he knows enough to get the right gifts, right? So why the fuck wouldn't the doctor... What are you... Why would this... What, why is this even disqualifying? What are you even talking about right now? Because you know the child more than that ch You know the child more than the doctor? I guess, but like that's a medical professional. That's like somebody driving a car with the wheels hanging off and going to a mechanic and the mechanic's like, yeah, uh, the car is like falling apart. This car is like missing features. Like the catalyst converter is gone, the wheels are out and you go, okay, well I'm with this car more often than you. So I think I know more than you. Um, okay, woman. Okay, fucking woman. Then I guess take the car back to your house in this terrible deplorable condition, I guess. I don't. Why would you even come here if you were just going to shit on the doctor because you only saw your son or your fucking daughter once or twice every single year? What is even the relevance of that? Why would you even go to the doctor if you were just going to shit on the doctor? You know. No. So that's, I think, the thing to keep in mind is... So How come this woman down here is not, like, stepping in? Like, this woman just said some crazy shit and you, you're just, like, not even saying anything at all? Like, I we all heard that this woman just literally said that the doctor doesn't know anything about medical, right? Medical stuff. And this woman's just down there like, mm-hmm, totally, mm-hmm, no pushback, okay, bye, sure, I guess. After twice a year, they don't care, you know, so that's, I Great think, the thing right to here. keep in mind is set boundaries where you can, but if you can't, find a way to reinforce, and then check in with your kid after, you know, how did you- What, what I don't care about what my kid says, what, I, why does that matter? Why does the kid, why does the kid's opinion matter? Like, what is that, what are you even talking about? Like, oh, yeah. My kid, my kid, like, stuck four crayons in his ear and, like, broke them off. Um, but the doctor told me we could take them out, but I, I wanted to know what the kid wanted to do. Why do you guys put so much power in children? You do realize that they're literal children, right? They're not, like, they're incomplete human beings. Like, until they turn around 18, maybe a little bit after that, they're not really, like, full-fledged human beings. Like, you do understand as a parent, your entire idea of being a parent is to take care of those people. Like you do understand you're supposed to be responsible enough to not only take care of yourself adequately, but also take care of them. So why would you then ask the child, like, how do you feel about this? 
what are you talking about? I don't give a fuck what the kid has to say. I'm just trying to get the kid solved. I'm trying to get the issues formatted. I don't need... Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. This is just like... It's just such a stupid thing to say. I... I, I, I what? How could this per... This person down here is not saying shit? Like, it's just, there's no words being exchanged at all? You just heard this woman say literal hogwash? Like, the worst information you could say? And then you're over here like... Oh my god, yes. Yes. Oh my god, that's such a great phrase. Oh my god, yes. Really? Okay. Both of you people are suck dick. Both of you people are not good people. You know, so that's... Literal it. child endangerment shit right here. I think the thing to keep in mind is set boundaries where you can, but if you can't find a way to reinforce and then check in with your kid after you know how did you feel about what they said you know this is what i think about the way doctors talk about weight you know i think they talk about it too much and <laughs> okay um sure sure you can then so it's layering on that added education in an age-appropriate way of course what is an age-appropriate way like if a doctor tells you that your kid is obese and it's negative on their health and then you tell them nah you tell that doctor like nah i'm good it's fine and then you go to your your fucking child and you go you're fine dude you're fine oh you can't get out of your seat without my help no nah, you're fine oh you can't walk up the stairs you're fine oh you never like when you go out to recess and all the kids make fun of you because you're really fat you're fine oh you just ate literally like the entire refrigerator worth of fruit you're fine like there's no issues there huh why would you even go to the doctor if that was the case man what is the purpose of that you're just fundamentally wasting time for no reason why i wrote this movie because mm, yeah. hundreds of people especially women not just from across the u.s but around the world were commenting how they had quit running, quit tennis, quit uh, you know wearing shorts since they were ten, right? Because right, Alyssa, of she saying, quit dancing, right? Yeah. And honestly, and, and this is what I love about it. So I'm sorry, that's such a backhanded thing, bro, to bring up Alyssa like that, man. Jesus Christ! And you could tell Alyssa didn't want anything to do with that. You saw her face, Alyssa. Look she at quit dancing. Look at Alyssa, you fucking bitch. You fucking bitch. Why would you bring that shit out? Why would you fucking bring up that shit? How I, how I quit dancing because I'm fat. Has it ever occurred to anybody here that the reason why they might have quit dancing was maybe because of the weight that they put on and not actually the fact that they don't look as good as they used to look and they're insecure about that? Could it just be the fact that they can't dance because their weight is too big on the body? Could that be the issue? Or no, it's never. that's never the issue. It's actually just the fact that they're subconscious and the society tells them no. Um, also, wearing shorts, yeah. I mean, I can see that one too. I, yeah. Right? Yeah. Honestly, and, and this is what I love about it, fit. is it's saying you are so not alone. Yeah. And I looked and realized how alone we all felt in that moment, right? And how alone and isolated we felt with our own self-loathing self what is this like self-glazing session these fat people have every single month dude it's literally just them talking about how terrible their lives are and then doing nothing about it while subtly shitting on Alyssa. hatred embarrassment shame when in reality that turns our brain into like an echo chamber which makes it worse oh really we're talking about echo chambers now huh it seems kind of interesting that you would say echo chamber here, but you wouldn't say echo chamber when you're literally in a room full of fat women that are just consistently yes-queening you about literally everything that you say and have zero pushback, even on the craziest shit that you say. Totally fine. Um, by the way, stop shitting on Alyssa, okay? I know that she kind of deserves it a little bit, but, dude, you guys are all supposed to be friends. You're supposed to have support for each other. You guys are supposed to care for each other, and yet I always see on this podcast... You guys are consist consistently shitting on her. Um, there was the last podcast where she was going over how she got bullied, and I shit you not, one of them literally laughed. God damn, bro. I thought this was supposed to be like a modern therapy session for these people, and yet they consistently shit on them over and over and over again. Right, and the only way uh, we can make that shame less powerful is if we... If you lose weight, yeah. If you lose weight. Start talking. Oh, oh, my bad. Oh, I thought I thought we were being logical. I thought I thought it was gonna somehow mean to like lose weight, but I guess we weren't. No, it's just like my bad. <laughs> well, why would we do that, right? Why would we lose weight when we could just not lose weight? Uh, why would we be healthier when we can eat lots more food? Why would we do any of that, right? It was so deep down and so ingrained that it looks like such a jarring experience to kind of like shake me out of it, right? And. <laughs> I, I think 
I believe this is the woman that does fat yoga where she just sits down on the floor and like maybe sits down on like a, cr a milk crate and then moves her leg every once in a while. And she tries to say that it's okay to do that because, you know, fat people have joy and movement or whatever the fuck that shit is. Big belly? No problem. First, find a comfortable seated position. Feet together, knees apart is my favorite in Baddha Konasana. Second, we can bring the belly between the legs, creating more space through the hip joint. Third, we can sit on a bolster. This creates more space, so if we like, we can cross our legs. I prefer Baddha Konasana myself, so sometimes I'll bring- When you have to like, pick up your stomach and put it on the side of your leg, or put it in the middle, and then like the fact that you can't lift up your leg you can't lift it up. You have to like physically grab onto the whatever fabric you're using, whatever these Lululemon legs are. You have to pick that up and like grab onto the fabric to move your leg. Should be a wake up call. That shouldn't be something you do. You're not old enough to have to pick up your leg like that as if you're some kind of like construction worker and you're one of those big machines. That's not supposed to be like that, okay? I just wanna point that out. It's also really crazy for this person to have to lift up their stomach the way that they are. It's, it's, it, why? Why don't you just lose weight? And blocks beneath the knees to help support the legs, especially if I'm pulling, feeling pulling in the inner line of the leg. It's just sad. If I want to sit in a wide-legged position, I'll bring the blocks beneath the thighs to keep my knees from hyperextending. The smell. Also, in twist, we have the option of bringing the belly onto the oh leg. Oh my god, dude. It's just unsanitary behavior to have to pick up the stomach and throw it over on one leg just to make sure you can twist your body. Why not just lose weight? Just lose weight! It doesn't need to be like this! I don't know, okay? I don't know why you wouldn't just lose weight. I don't know why you wouldn't just push yourself to lose weight so you can so you can do the aerobic activities that you want to do instead of being prohibited by the body that you're in right now that's like somebody literally trying to be the most fuel efficient car on the road and buying an 18 wheeler and it costs like $1200 to fill up your entire tank just to get to back and forth to to work like why wouldn't you just not drive the 18 wheeler why wouldn't you get something smaller that's more efficient that's something more family friendly something that's going to be energy efficient like why wouldn't you do that no i got to maintain my fucking big ass 18 wheeler optimus prime body because society tells me I'm bad, I guess. I don't know, man. Whatever. I don't like the awkward pauses too. Um, and one of the what I one thing I don't like too is that this person doesn't contribute anything to the podcast. Uh, it would honestly probably be better if it was like Chat GBT and this fat person was down here. Sorry, this fat person was just asking Chat GBT what they could do. But I'm pretty sure Chat GBT would be hella based and it would tell that person exactly what they need to do. But anyway, let's you know keep going. And. <laughs> I, I think moving forward, it became something that was just another example of the ways that society's voice becomes your voice without realizing it and having to stop and be like, am I thinking this or is this somebody else's thoughts? Everybody, everybody's thoughts are something's thoughts, okay? Uh, everybody's already thought about something before you. You don't have a unique thought compared to anybody else because everybody's already thought of that, and that's okay. But the difference is sometimes the things that everybody thinks are correct. So, like, for instance, when somebody says drinking water to hydrate yourself is efficient, and you go, well, is it? Yes, it is, 100%. It is. Uh, maybe a little bit of salt in there to get your electrolytes, but other than that, yeah, water is very, very good. Same thing with nutrition. You should be eating nutritious foods, and then you can go, well nutritious foods what about like kfc sure you can do kfc but like we all know what is what is good and what is not bad uh what is good and what is bad so when you say like is society telling me stuff yeah there's a reason why you wear clothes there's a reason why you rent an apartment there's a reason why you have books behind you there's a reason why you know how to read there's a reason why you drive your car there's a reason why you do any of this stuff is because society tells you that this is optimal and that you should do it and i don't know understand like when these people uh nitpick certain things that they think are good and bad and especially when it comes to when society tells you losing weight or being at an optimal body size is good why would you then go oh yeah this is obviously bad why that i've mistaken for my own you know whose voice is really talking you know is it my your your voice right now is talking but it's also the voice of very depressed people that actually don't want to do anything about themselves because you have somehow managed to externalize literally all of your issues. Third grade teacher. Is it, you know, what? my gym teacher from elementary school? Is it, you know, uh, that stranger who just like threw something out of their car at me? On the Ooh, who, who threw something at your car? Who, who's driving by and throwing trash at you? 
Who who is doing that? Where do you live where this is transpiring at all? This is my second time on these podcasts where I've heard somebody say this. Who is tossing food at you? At the car? Who is doing that? That's a made up thing. Stop saying that shit. It's not real. The street. Oh my God. Did that really happen? No, it didn't. She's lying. She's just saying that so she get in reaction because she knows that you're literally saying nothing right now. So she needs a reason for you to talk. So she's going to come up with something really, really, really crazy. No, that's never happened ever. Oh yeah. <gasps> One down. What do you mean? Oh yeah. What do you mean? Oh yeah, bro. What do you mean? Who? How? What was it? What did they toss at you? An air freshener? Be thin and, and things will be better, right? Yes, that is true. One day you will be thin and things will be better because the less that you weigh compared to the fatness that you have on your body right now will mean that you are healthier and you can move more and you'll be more aerobic. Yes. And like, I mean, I know I felt that way growing up constantly, right? And, and now I'm a fat adult and I acknowledge that that is not my reality and I don't but want why does it want to be my reality but why though like why don't you want to lose weight why don't you want to move around more why don't you want to have a why do you want to have a less efficient life why do you want to live your life on hard mode like why do you want your life to be suck dick perpetually it, it just doesn't make sense to me how these people can literally acknowledge all the badness of being fat and then be like yeah I don't want to be thin why it just it's so great over here like I mean, we can move our arms around, we can walk, we can get out of bed, we can tie our own shoes without having to, like, have somebody else do it for us. We don't. We can wear clothes that apparently you guys can't find. Um, I don't have to buy, like, double reinforced bed frames. I don't. If I want to wear a necklace, I don't have to wear a necklace extender. I mean, there is just so many good things about not being fat, and all you have to do is just eat less. But I guess that's too much for these people. Because I love my body and I love my fatness. You can love your... Why? Your fatness is easy. If so, what? Bro, being fat is easy. All you got to do is just not care about yourself consistently enough to gain weight. That's all it is. Just eat more than you usually eat by like 20 or 30%. By the end of the year, you'll be fat as fuck. Guaranteed. So if you're sitting here and you're telling me I love my fat body, that'd be like the equivalent of somebody saying I love my cancer. Why would you love that? You don't have to have that shit. You, it's a literal detriment. It's nothing but badness. Being fat? Why the fuck are you celebrating that shit? All right, you know, you, you know what, dude, whatever, bro. You love your fatness, and I love, I don't know, man. I, I can't even think of something that I love. Oh, I guess, like, 90s rom-coms. I like 90s rom-coms, but at least 90s rom-coms have, like, I don't know, Matthew McConaughey in them sometimes. Early 2000 ones, too. Those are pretty good, I guess. I don't know, man. What do you want from me, dude? I, it's like, I'm trying to find something, dude. There's nothing close. N not my reality, and I don't want it to be my reality because I love my body, and I love my fatness, and I... Can, you, can the woman down here just say something at all to, like, counter that? Like, okay, well, what do you mean by you love your fatness? Like, do you not suffer from any conditions at all? Like, can you go over why you love your fatness? Like, what about your fatness do you love? There's no pushback at all. There's, like, not even a question. This woman is literally useless. I think if I were a thin person, I'd probably be, like, a lot uh, worse of a person than I am, to be honest. Why would you say that? The implication of that is that thin people are just worse or the, thin people are just worse compared to fat people because what? Because you guys have been through more trauma compared to thin people and therefore you have more understanding? No, suck me off. You haven't gone through more trauma. Matter of fact, the only trauma that you've gone through are maybe like your knees crinkling or maybe like gravity itself pushing down upon you. How dare you say that shit? You don't know shit. You don't know anything, bro. You're just projecting all your insecurities upon everybody else and you're sitting here trying to proclaim that you know something. You're all high and mighty and shit like that. Get off your high horse before you fall down and not be able to get back up, Jordan. Get the fuck off me. That's like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I just like, I, I, that's like such a fucked up thing to say. It really is a fucked up thing to say, bro. Um, because then people no, it's not how that works at all. I quite am. And I think that like my fatness has taught me a lot and yeah, like high blood pressure, diabetes, yeah. Made me who I am in a lot of ways. And Duh, like, I mean, that makes fucking sense, right? Obviously, you're fat, and that's like your whole like your whole life you've been fat. Therefore, your life is shaped by that. Yes, of course, but you don't have to be fat. You could just be thin and I guess be like, I don't know. Like, wouldn't it be better if you were fat and you did believe that you were somehow morally speaking better than everybody else? Wouldn't it be better to lose that weight and then still be morally great and also healthily great? Like, and I think that, but I think a lot of people don't view it that way. Yeah, because it's not, that's not logical. In high school felt very isolated just because like I was uh, more often than not like the biggest person in the room. Yeah. And then like other people who 
were also big, like you would want to make those connections with them, but they've also felt like they needed to isolate themselves. And now I'm kind of like trying to like build that community where. When I went to school, okay. When I went to school, there was no white people. There was maybe <clears throat> three, three or four white kids in the school. And I was like two of them, okay. I would constantly get mistaken for these white kids. And sure, you might be thinking, well, David, there's other white kids. You can make friends with these white kids. No, it, it didn't matter. You know why? Because just because they were white doesn't necessarily mean that they had some kind of like, uh, you know, intrinsic value to them because they were white. No, nope, it didn't make any difference to me. I made friends with all the black kids and maybe a couple Puerto Rican kids and one Middle Eastern kid because it didn't matter. It didn't matter. We all came from the same cultural background. We all had the same understanding. And just because that person was white doesn't mean necessarily that they would be a better person to be friends with because they're white. You know, to be honest, me being white is like one of the most uh, devalued things about me in the sense of like, I don't really care about it. Like, uh, it's a part of my identity, obviously. Like if you, if you saw me down the street, you would say a white guy with a mustache, of course. But for the most part, if somebody asks me who I am, I'm not going to identify myself as white first. It's probably going to be like the 20th thing that I'd say. So I would say things like I'm David. Uh, you know, I, I, I have a lot of friends. I like playing Yu-Gi-Oh. These are my hobbies. This is what I like to do. I like to work out. I like to play basketball. I like to video games. Um, I love Dragon Ball. I love this, this, this. Oh, and yes, I'm white and I'm also a dude. Like these are the things I would say after all that stuff. Um, for some reason, a lot of people think that just because you're fat or you're black or whatever, somehow that means that that person is going to be better to be friends with or like you're going to have more communicational uh more communicational stuff with that person and i can kind of see it a little bit with some black people in america because they all share like a cultural understanding to one degree or another but not all the time it's going to happen in the same way that like just because that person is white doesn't mean they're going to have the same experience as me probably not so the same thing here like you're going to try to be friends with a fat person that doesn't necessarily mean that fat person believes everything that you believe and just because they're fat doesn't mean that they're going to want to be your friend. That's not how that works at all. So um, I would always err on the side of like even though these people are like fat or they're very, very, very um, like the same as you, that doesn't mean they're the same as you. That just means they have one characteristic that are like you. Odds are you could probably find friends in other places. It's very like like just body positivity forward in like all of my friend groups. My Why? best friend. Oh, that's terrible though. Oh, that's terrible, dude. Your your friend groups are just literal yes queens. For the longest, who's also my cousin, Audrey, is also a big person and has really been, like, my rock. Like, just, like, going... Yeah, my rock. Also, the shape of their body is also a rock. Going through junior high and high school, and now I'm just, like, kind of slowly building up that community with people of all types of bodies and just making sure that that is like i don't like her eyebrows they remind me of some kind of like villain eyebrows a an ideal or like a value a value is a better word within our friend group and just making sure that we're like we're all good if that makes sense it's it's okay to have disagreements with your friends they don't have to believe in everything that you believe in why do you think that all your friends have to be like colmagate together and all believe the same shit you don't have to do that that just sounds like a yes queen environment like you're just talking about a vacuum chamber i also want to add like in high school i had friends who were fat who did not want to be fat there you go that, that's exactly what i'm saying just because they're fat doesn't necessarily mean they're they they're going to be your friend because they're fat most of them don't most fat people in general do not want to be fat so yeah that's that's going to be the norm and there's a big difference having friends that are comfortable in their fatness and and positive in the way that they look out at the world as opposed to everything's against me and how detrimental that can be to everything true you are looking at yourself as a victim and you have coded yourself as much and you are actively avoiding responsibility while saying that you are mentally disabled and then also going on a podcast which proves that you're mentally disabled in your life yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i feel like whenever i think about my high school experience i was the biggest in the room there were some damn. people who were damn um, including the teacher like quote unquote chubby you know and they might have felt themselves fat but they so did not want to identify as fat yeah because nobody wants to be fat it's literally a detriment across the board there's like almost nothing good about it like e the only time i can ever think about something being good about being fat is if like you were in a very extreme scenario so like if you were starving or you were stuck in the mountains somewhere where there was no food and you knew you could survive longer than somebody that didn't have food but even in those scenarios, it might be beneficial to be the thinner person to go out and see if they can get food. So I don't like there's just no benefit to it. So, yeah. 
right. that it was impossible to talk about our bodies outside of the framing of dieting, you mm -hmm. know, and um, it, yeah, because it's not a good thing. So like everybody that knows most people that are fat know that it's not good. So of course, they're going to talk about ways to alleviate it. It wasn't until I was much, much older, much that you've convinced yourself that you put yourself in an echo chamber and you've conditioned yourself to believe something that's obviously incorrect. And you surrounded yourself with people that are just going to tell you the same shit over and over and over again, instead of encouraging to instead of encouraging you to make proper decisions to lose weight, you have instead brainwashed yourself. Beautiful. Amazing. Um, the American dream right here, dude. Older than y'all that I was able to have that. So like, it is like a little bit healing to hear about younger people experiencing that yeah. at a much yeah. younger age than I did. What about like the healing experience of their kneecaps when they like shake together because the gravity is hitting so hard? Like the fact that you are in your college dorm room and you have a roommate who you can talk to about those things, like badass. Like I love It's not badass. Love it for you. It's not badass dude, to have a friend that you could talk about fat stuff with. What are you talking about, dude? That's fucking weird. That's weird as hell. Oh my god, my armpits are sweating so heavily today. Oh my god, my under boobs on the back are sweating so hard today. Oh my god, can I share your deodorant? Wow, can you like put it on for me because I physically can't reach back there? Yeah, no problem, sis. Totally. Oh my god, slay. You should totally wear my clothes. Oh wait, let me just wash them really quickly because they're covered in grease. Not because I ate anything, because my body just emanates grease off itself. I have literal environments in my belly button because I'm so fat. Anyway, we're going to end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you can like the video, uh, share, all that stuff, that would be great. Helps me grow in the algorithm. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in acorn. They're beautiful and they're majestic and they help things grow. Trees and other things grow out of acorns and sometimes even spiders use them as houses, which is beautiful, by the way. Um, spiders are beautiful. They're amazing. They're fantastic. I have a few of them in my house. I don't kill them. I try not to kill them at least. Sometimes they'll be like, the other day I had one just like right here on my wall. And I was like, what are you doing here, bro? You look, I'm okay with you existing in my house, but you can't just be existing next to my mouth. You can't just be existing next to my face. That's fucked up. But anyway, uh, write down acorn down below and then I'll appreciate you forever. Thank you so much, by the way, for writing that down there. That is a very good handwriting that you did right there. That's very beautiful. I love the font that you chose. Oh, it was just the regular YouTube font? Beautiful either way. Uh, anyway, guys, um, I have to remind everybody that your handwriting is beautiful. It is. It, it, your handwriting is quite beautiful, compared to mine at least. My handwriting is like Michael J. Fox. Like, I, you know, I suck dick at writing. Thank God we drifted away from paper and stuff like that because I would have been busted if that was the case. Um, the other night, when I saw you mouthwashing, can you do that again tonight? But can you do it slower? I'm very interested in seeing the technique. I'm really interested in seeing how it goes in your mouth. I'm really interested in seeing how lubricated your mouth are, is. And after when you spit, can I see you brush your teeth more efficiently? I love that. I love that about you. It's so great. Your teeth always come out so sparkly, so beautifully, so amazingly. And I love that. I love the way that your eyebrows are formatted directly onto your face in a perfect in a perfect way. That is so great and beautiful. And I also love that you're doing cardio right now. That's amazing. Or you're working. Or you're doing whatever you're doing. I love that for you. Thank you for being a responsible adult. Uh, anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my socials, they'll be listed down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.